here with Merrimack Hockey head coach Scott Boric uh, announcing the new freshman class and uh, some transfers as well this year. And um, uh, coach, before we get into each guy, just uh, uh, a comment on, you know, what, what this process was like, a bit of an unusual uh, year with COVID, obviously, um, you know, almost half the newcomers are transfers. Um, what, what was that process like of trying to really fill out this 21-22 roster? Well, you know, this was obviously a unique year. I mean, not only because of the pandemic, but also because of the, you know, the transfer portal kind of opening up and, uh, you know, player rights and student athletes ability to move schools is, is much uh, easier now. So we had a number of players who made decisions to leave Merrimack. And we also had a number of players uh, from that transfer portal who decided to join us. And I think, um, you know, the, it makes the prediction of your roster year to year much more difficult. Uh, but, you know, I felt very comfortable with where our roster came out of this uh, the last two months. I uh, really like our incoming class. That includes the transfers. They all bring something a little, a little bit different. Um, but the nice thing is you have four guys coming in who have collegiate experience. And that, you know, that's that's really an important piece to try to get your program to move forward. And so I'm hoping that their experience can you know, kind of bleed into the locker room and, and then hopefully we can take off from there. It definitely builds an excitement. And looking at these freshmen, there's – uh, one that maybe jumps out a little more as we start looking at this because of his height. We start with uh, Hugo Olas, uh, Swedish goalie, New York Ranger draft pick from last year. Uh, what, what do you see in uh, this big, tall net miner from Sweden? Well, obviously, I see that he's bigger than most goalies, that's for sure. Uh, but I really see a composed, he's really mature in his game. Um, he And this is a big stretch, and if he can get to this point, it would be great for both us and him. But he reminds me a lot of when we played against Helen Buck uh, when I was, I was not here at the time, but playing against Helen Buck, um, you know, you never felt like there was space. He always, uh, he was in front of the puck. He was square to the puck. He didn't over move. Uh, he was quiet and boring and really, really good. Um, and I think Hugo has potential. I'm not going to say he's going to do that out of the gate, uh, but he certainly has potential to do, to do that. You know, he possesses that poise right now in the net already. Um, and I think that's going to help him get out to a better start here than, than he would if he didn't have that. So, you know, the one thing we're excited about is that, you know, I think he's going to really push our other goaltenders um, and, we, and we like them as well. So it should be a, a good competition in the fall. And I think you'll see Hugo um, really mature as he, as the longer he's here and his game will mature as he gets accustomed to the North American game. He's never played in the North American game before, um, but we'll see how that goes get out of the gate. Next up, we uh, have a four with Mac Capani out of Dexter Southfield, and uh, he could be getting his name called in the NHL draft coming up in a couple months as well. Uh, what do you see out of uh, a local recruit here in Matt? Well, Matt Capone is, is a very uh, high, high uh, energy level, high work ethic player. He's a high level compete. Uh, I think that the reason he's a true freshman and, you know, we've talked about this in the past, that's a difficult thing for a true freshman to do, particularly coming out of the year we just had where he didn't really get to have a full season. Um, but because to me, when I say a game, what is the, when the player is playing his best, what is he bringing to your team? You know, his A game is his B game. His compete is his A game and his B game is his compete. And so, you know, in our, in our eyes, looking at him moving forward, um, you know, the only thing he was going to do in junior hockey was get a year older. Uh, I think he can contribute, and um, I'm excited about him. He plays really hard. Uh, he plays fast. Uh, he's excited about Merrimack, and, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to having him, and I think he'll bring a lot to the middle of the rink for us. And next up, someone that was supposed to be here last year but ended up, um, you know, taking another year to develop and, uh, you know, kind of a funny situation with COVID with uh, Mark Hillier. Uh, went out to the BCHL, wasn't really able to play, but, um, you know, I'm one of the highest scorers, I believe the highest score ever at St. Andrews College. Uh, what, what are you hoping to see out of Mark now that uh, he'll be on campus this fall? Well, Mark is a highly skilled, highly intelligent player. You know, his uh, IQ, hockey IQ and his vision, he typically makes the guys around him a lot better. Um, you know, literally, I went up to see him play in the championship game of their league you know, with the intent of telling him to take another year. Um, and in the first period, he had four points. Um, and by the second period, he was coming right away. 
And uh, then when I spoke to him later that summer, because he didn't, you know, he's from Labrador, he doesn't have a lot of resources at his, you know, right around him. So he really felt when they got locked down last year that he didn't get the opportunity to train like he wanted to train before he came to college. And that's why he went out and played junior. Um, and unfortunately, this, you know, Surrey got shut down and then he went out to Summerside in, in the uh, Maritime Hockey League. And he had a lot of success over a point of game. Um, but to Mark, you know, Mark is a highly cerebral, highly talented player. Uh, I want to plug him in and see what happens. You know, I think that he, um, the areas of Mark's life where he hasn't uh, gone in and already succeeded quickly, playing soccer at St. Andrews, which is a really good soccer program. Uh, he hadn't played. He went in and ended up being a starter. You know, he had never been in a play before. He ended up being the lead in their play two years in a row. I think he has a lot of things that he brings that the challenge that he'll face here will bring it out in hockey. It hasn't happened to him yet. He's always just produced. And so I think it's a, it will be a big challenge for him, but I'm really confident that he's going to end up being very successful. And it'll be uh, helpful for him having a former teammate. Next up, we have Devlin O'Brien, who also played at St. Andrews with Mark Hillier, then played in the BCHL last year at Penticton. Uh, what, what do you see out of his game? Devlin is a 200 foot excessively consistent player like he um, he's as good a player on the walls naturally it isn't something I mean I'm sure he's worked on it but just as a even as a high school player and then again as a junior player he's so efficient with the puck uh, he's really thorough um, in his defensive game uh, I think he's going to find his way in to the lineup because he, he just doesn't make very many mistakes and I think that the um, the pace of play won't be something that will challenge him after the first week. Um, and he'll just continue to make plays. He's one of those players that um, he can help you win in many different ways. Uh, and I'm excited about it. He had a good year in Penticton, uh, originally got injured uh, when they started back up and then was able to get back for like the last seven or eight games. I think had some, had some good points, but more than that, you know, blocked a lot of shots and played really well on the wall and did the little things to help them be successful. So he's a player that I, I would project you know, having a lot of success in college and probably early. And he completes the, the freshman group or the forward freshman group coming in, moving on to the back end, the defense. And um, it, it's the Swedish connection. We start off with uh, Ivan Zivlak, who was a teammate with uh, Hugo Olas at Lincoln Ping. And, um, you know, it seems like both these new incoming freshman defensemen have a lot of offensive upside. So we'll start with Ivan. Uh, what do you see out of him? Well, it's interesting. Ivan's a bigger guy, uh, 6'2", skates really well. Uh, as a younger player involved in the Swedish national program, he was kind of what had been plugged into him and what he saw from his game was, was a lot of offense. He was an offensive defenseman. I think in the last year and a half, two years, Lin Ping and the staff there have got him to focus more on his defense. Uh, and he's really done a good job in that regard. Um, I think that, you know, we're getting a pretty complete player uh, in Ivan. He's physical. He skates well. It makes a really good first pass. Uh, I think he's kind of found his game, you know, through the last two years as far as how he can be successful. So it's not just leaning on an A game of offense. He can play defensively for you as well. Uh, and again, just like Adam Arvidsson and Hugo Olas, their biggest challenge will be, you know, the smaller ice surface, how they cover it, um, and and how they can defend on it. Uh, and if they, I'm sure they, he'll be able to play offense on it, but how he plays defense on it will be very important. But after an initial adjustment, we expect big things from Ivan. And you mentioned Adam Arvidsson. He's next up, another uh, Swedish defenseman. You know, do you see him jumping in as well? Yeah, Adam is, uh, he's more uh, pure offense. I, I don't want to say he doesn't play defense, but I think that, you know, as he's grown and as he's uh, developed, uh, his coaches have seen that offense as his primary um, way to impact the lineup. Uh, so, you know, he's still going to be developing defensively. But, you know, when you watch him, uh, there's a real will to play defense. He just hasn't uh, been asked to do it that much. Uh, but he's a really good offensive player, uh, very good at the offensive blue line, has power play skill. Um, I think Adam's going to be very successful here. Uh, you know, he's, he has a great uh, lineage. His dad played in the show. And, you know, I think his dad's been, you know, leaning on him about going to college and leaning on him about, you know, trying to get to be the best he can. He's a little undersized right now, but, um, I think after, you know, six months, he'll be in a really good place. And before we move on to introducing these transfers, half of the incoming freshman class, Swedish, about a fourth of the roster is Swedish now, and Phil Forsmark, returning leading scorer, also Swedish. 
has that been a focus trying to you know recruit a little bit more there and in Scandinavia and uh, who's been spearheading that? Well, you know what? One of the uh, things when we put our staff together was, and when it was when Curtis Carr was with us here, and I brought Josh on Josh Siako on board. Josh had a lot of uh, experience in Sweden and Finland. Uh, he'd done a lot of work there before, so that was a, a focus of ours out, right out of the gate was to try to make some inroads there, um, try to you know find you know the guys that want to go to college, which is tough enough. Find a coach that would let you talk to them. Much more difficult because they want to keep them there. Um, but uh, Josh started that for us. And then when Curtis left and we were able to hire Dan Jewell, uh, Dan also had a lot of experience over there. So now I have two guys on our staff who, you know, can fly into Stockholm and know where they're going right away or fly into Helsinki. Um, really a benefit to us. Uh, the other thing that happened this year was that the, the Swedish U-20 league, that one played from the beginning. So we had much more opportunity to see them play via, you know, hockey TV and video. Um, so we probably saw those guys play more than we saw any American or Canadian play uh, that's coming to school. So um, that was a big part of it this year. They just had the opportunity to get exposed through the through them playing where other kids did not. Um, I would say it's been an area we feel we can do well in, but not an area that we're trying to focus only exclusively on. It, it's kind of a coincidence that we're there right now. But um, but, you know, if these guys have success. It's always easier to recruit the next guy, too. Absolutely. And moving on to the transfers now, uh, four players joining the Warriors who have previous college experience. And uh, we'll start off with Steven Jandrick, who played at Denver last year, but was teammates with Max Newton the year before in Alaska and 127 games of experience in the NCAA. But what sticks out is that Jandrick and Newton finished one, two in scoring at Alaska a couple of years ago. Um, you know, is he necessarily going to play with Newton right away? And what do you think uh, he can bring to the team? Well, you know, Steve is, uh, we liked Steve when he was in Vernon before he ever went to Alaska. Uh, Josh Jack had recruited him uh, a little bit. And then, um, you know, he went and he had a lot of success in Alaska and he played with, they were line mates. They were one, two in scoring, but they were also line mates, power play partners. And uh, I don't think they did it much penalty killing, but they've played a lot together. And you saw the success Max had last year. Um, if you're a successful player with him, you know, certainly it would, it would be a, um, a bonus to try to put them together right away and see if they can catch that chemistry again. Um, but I think that the thing I like about Steve is he plays fast. Uh, he's kind of a heavy player. Uh, he's passionate. He gets over pucks. Um, and I think that he was in a, he was in a, he's a blue, blue collar offensive player. So I think at Denver, he was just in a system that wasn't really built for him uh, with a perfect system for him. And I think that uh, coming in with a player he's played with before an ability to impact our team coming out of a really high level program that he is coming out of this year. Um, I, we expect really positive things with Steve. Next up, we'll go to the, the back end with Colby Bukes out of Minnesota state and didn't necessarily play in a ton of games past two years for Minnesota state, a, a team that's been, you know, hanging right around the top five in the country, but a high score in the USHL. Uh, where, where do you see him fitting into the lineup? Well, Kobe's an interesting case. You know, he didn't have the career that he wanted to have at Minnesota State. There were many factors, and I'm sure that, you know, some of them we know, some of them we don't. Um, but when I spoke to the coach at Minnesota State, Mike Hastings, we've been friends for a long time, and he was really high on him. And he said, you know, he's a coach that likes to roll his six defensemen uh, unless there's someone banged up or hurt. And what happened last year was he put uh, Colby into a game, the game that we were able to watch, um, and he played really well. And he created a little bit of a headache for them as now they had seven defensemen um, and it wasn't something they really thought they were going to go into the year with. Um, and so Colby ended up being kind of the odd man out, um, but high recommendation from him. We all had seen him play uh, in the USHL. Declan Carlisle played with him. Uh, Logan Drevich played with him. Uh, I think he has high end offensive skill. And I think getting him in, into our program where he gets to play more often, uh, where he's playing on a, on a rank that I think suits him. Skating wise, uh, I think that, you know, he should be able to contribute pretty quickly. You know, his edges are really good and that's what need to, you need to have coming into uh, the Lawler. So I, I'm really confident in his ability to help us. And the second and final forward, also a Denver transfer and the most NCAA games coming in as a transfer, 131 games already played for Jake Durflinger. Um, and then talk with Dan Jewell a little bit. Sounds like just a, a tough player to play against. Yeah, Jake. He was tough to play. He's one of those players that we're going to love to have, but uh, the teams aren't going to like that we play against. And he, um, you know, he's played in three championship 
level games at Denver. He's played in the biggest stages that are out there. He comes here understanding his role as well as any player I've ever spoken to on the phone. He understands who he is. He understands how he can impact our team. Uh, and what I took from my conversations with him is his swagger is something our locker room could use. And um, I like that. I like that he's had the success he's had. Even in junior, he had a lot of success on winning teams. Uh, he's won more often than not. And I think that's because he's a winner. Uh, and I'm excited to bring him into the locker room, not only for the games and everything else, but I'm excited to bring that winning attitude into the room. And looking at the final transfer, uh, Christian Felton played last year at Bentley. But before, uh, uh, you know, some good numbers with Vernon and BCHL and Kimball Union Academy. Uh, how were you able to get him to join the team and what, what are you looking for him? Well, Christian's a guy that all of us knew really well because he played at Kimball Union for a few years. Uh, he played at Vernon for only one. And I think what Christian, what happened to Christian was he went to Vernon uh, and probably, and I, I don't know what he would say to this, but probably should have played a second year, um, you know, just for his defensive game to kind of, you know, shape itself a little bit more than, than it was when he got to Bentley. Uh, he had some success there, um, but had more success before he got there. Um, he's a right shot defenseman who moves the puck well. He can get up in the play. Uh, you know, he played for a really good coach at Kimball Union and Timmy Whitehead. Played for a really good coach in Vernon and Jason McKee. Uh, so I, I think we're getting a well-schooled player, a very, very passionate player about his game, very committed in his game. Um, so I'm excited to see what he can bring. I, th I think that uh, we got fortunate that there, to be honest with you, that he, um, you know, he wanted to make a move and, and, and we were fortunate enough that he decided to come to us because I think he's a player that can help us. So those are the, the 10 newcomers. And before we uh, let you go, just last question for you, Scott. Um, you know, how, how much easier or how much simpler has it been this year to start and plan now for October when you don't have all these uh, circumstances surrounding it with uh, COVID? How, how much easier has it been to visualize everything? Well, uh, honestly, last June, I thought I was planning for a regular October, right? We all thought this was right. a two-week, one-month thing. Yeah. And so nothing's really changed this June 9th. It was, it was last year's June 9th. But obviously, knowing what we just went through, um, it's exciting. It's fun. You know, it's just fun to be able to put the pen to pencil and say, this is going to happen on this day in September, and this is going to happen in October, and we're going to play this game in October. Uh, it's been really, it's, it's fun. It's just energizing. I think not only to our staff, but I think to our whole team, you know, I think that the people totally, and I know other coaches have said this, and I, I can only speak for our experience here, totally underestimate the challenge that our, our athletes, not just our hockey players, but our athletes, the students at Merrimack that everybody faced a year ago. Um, so it's almost like our appreciation level of normal is much higher than it was before. Uh, and that's true in my, in, in my world as well. So um, I feel good about our scheduling. I feel good about our roster. Um, and I'm really excited to get started with this team. And so we'll be, um, we'll be fun. We'll be fun to watch. And, and I think the growth of the program is really going to be seen this year. Well, Scott, I appreciate it. Looking forward to the year. And uh, thanks again. Thanks, Will. I really appreciate it. We'll talk soon.